Good evening and welcome to Dark Hour Paranormal. Folks, tonight I thought I'd do something a little bit different with you. Uh, I've been holding on to something for quite some time, and for very good reason. This particular reading that I had about a year ago with Michelle Gray encompassed many aspects of my life, but at the time, a very important and significant element came up within the reading, and that was the Montauk Project. Now, you guys have all heard me speak on this subject at large. In fact, I created a documentary over the summer entitled The Montauk Enigma that fully covers Camp Hero, but there's so much to this story, so many tendrils that reach out beyond our current grasp, and of course, the project itself is not necessarily considered to be linear. So that makes it very difficult for some of us to understand what this was all about, perhaps if there are implications moving forward given what they did there or didn't do, uh, the key whistleblowers being Al Balick, Duncan Cameron, and Preston Nichols, and of course their stories have been under scrutiny for a very long time. Now going forward, of course we built a lot of our understanding of what may have happened with the Philadelphia Experiment leading into the Montauk Project and everything sandwiched in between from those particular individuals. But there have been many others who have come forward and said, yes, I was part of this experiment, either on the victim side or I worked within the structure itself. And again, these people didn't have affiliations with any of those three key players. Now, when I began researching the Montauk Project some 20 years ago, this was something that I didn't have an immediate connection with, and yet I felt that there was always something there. Continually, I would return to this subject, or it would pop up out of nowhere, and I would be forced to look at it again within those 20 years. It was only about five years ago that I became serious in trying to understand why I felt the way I did uh, in way of this empathy, this sorrow, this guilt, uh, and literally closing my eyes and being able to see myself at this particular physical location, Camp Hero, on my mind was the question, why? Now, of course, uh, I had this reading, as I mentioned, with Michelle, and it did bring some clarity to perhaps my involvement or the situation that presents itself to me when it comes to whatever happened in Camp Hero. So I'd like to, again, present this to you with that in mind, and I will speak on another narrative that I've gotten since this reading, but for the meantime, please enjoy this little segment. Let's briefly talk about Montauk very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I understood what you said uh, during the show, um, but I'm curious as to why it's Montauk specifically. Because in my recollection, I'm, I'm not at MK Ultra. I'm not in, you know, any of these uh, other conspiratorial projects that have alleged to happen. It's just something with Montauk that I I can't. I mean, other than you know, I see the dimensional traveling. I maybe I'm visiting, but why? What, what's the point behind that? Hmm, like why you're why it's why it's that particular one that yeah. you're so connected to. Yes. Hmm. Okay, you ready for this? this I think so. <laughs> this is, okay. So let's see if we can put this into words. You have connection to the individuals um because this is going into the emotions because what they're showing me is the sacral chakra and this is going deep into the emotions because this makes you very emotional mm -hmm. do you feel deep emotion with this um oh, yeah. okay there's a couple levels to this so if we think about we're all connected in one way or another we're all connected to our galactic family and and that is Eric says, whether you believe it or not, or whether anybody believes it or not, there are parts of our soul because nothing is linear. Our lives are not happening in a linear form. They're happening where they're in. Um, he says to think about it in a circular way. So you have a part of your soul that exists in another form in a galactic resonance. And mm -hmm. it is very connected to the same individuals part of that same space as them and he says within the Pallades and he's pointing over to Andromeda mm -hmm. Andromedan um, that's one part of it who's the guy uh, there's one guy um, 
one guy with the white hair. Um, it was a little heavier set. Preston Nichols. Okay. Is this the one with a wine shirt? Yes. Okay. You've got soul connection to him because I feel like he stands out for you. He does more than the other ones. Mm -hmm. Um, like a uh, father and son, parent and child. There's a uh, um, Eric's just showing me some of the different levels to it. Like um, there's connection in other lifetime, but what Eric says is this goes so much deeper than what maybe we can understand. Mm -hmm. But he also talks about you traveling. And so while this has been existing, oh God, I don't know if I can make sense of this, but like I can, but I don't know if I can say it, say it <laughs> right. But okay. Um, okay. Let me see if Eric can straighten me out here for a second. Sure. Think about, um, okay. Do you remember traveling or do you astral travel? Did you astral travel as a child? Yes. Okay. Your astral traveling was within the same dimensional space that there was things going on there because of your connection to them because of your and and this had purpose to it so eric says that it's not just a hey i'm visiting you there's purpose to it and it had okay. something to do with your um because he keeps saying the word saving or rescuing I don't know how else to make sense of that for you. <laughs> um, like I could draw you diagrams, I guess, or something, but it's, it's, it's a multi layered loaded question. I think I understand that actually. I, I, Eric says it, it's how it affects you in this lifetime. If you think about what we just talked about with the past lifetimes with the rational fear. He says, let's look at that same structure mm -hmm. when we talk about it being cellular, when we talk about it being ingrained and imprinted in your soul. He says, so why that particular one? Because you have connection to those souls and time is not linear. So understand that you could astral travel back to times and spaces where you're physically focused right now that you didn't exist in. Ah, uh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And I'll be honest with you, when I first uh, really started exploring this subject, I felt that in some way I was there, but almost as like a spiritual observer in a sense. Like yes. I was there watching with others that were with me. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. That, that makes sense. Because yes. I can picture the chair. I can see it in complete detail in my head, that entire room that they used uh, just yeah. to say, you know, one thing. So, okay. Good. And, and there was some, there's something about your, because Eric says, like, saving helper. There's something about your energy that fed the assistance, like, um, helped them. That did yeah. something. So, it, oh, that's, okay, perfect. He says, a lot of, um, when we think about energies around us, he says, they're not all spirits as in those that have crossed we have souls that are traveling out of their body and doing things that they don't consciously understand that they're doing that is part of their spirit and so that's okay. an, another dimension of what's happening so he says that's a way to understand and why that happens in the first place well you've got all these layers of connections and it's part of your spiritual mission if you want to call it that um but it's like hearing a call it's like hearing an astral call and yet you have no words to be able to put to it. You've just got these feelings. You've just got these flashes or these senses. And how do I figure that out? And he goes, well, the thing is, is you are very sensitive and you have ability. And so you're extrasensory. You're tuning into all these different things that say the average person doesn't understand. But you also have a soul that is here at a particular time to be able to be part of things that are beyond what our human mind would put together or understand now keep in mind discussing this in a tangible sense here in the physical is already difficult 
But then you take it into the world of clairvoyance, out into the ethers, and apparently, that's even more difficult to explain. So, while Michelle is essentially saying that my energy is connected to, specifically, Preston Nichols, I've also, in my astral travels and dreaming states, have been, or at least found myself, in those same spaces or dimensions, wherein things did occur within the project, or they're still occurring. Now, I've felt, uh, through certain meditation, and I've gotten this glimmer of an insight when it comes to perhaps my involvement on those levels, it does seem to resonate with some sort of rescue mission or, you know, going out and helping those or rebuilding something that's been destroyed that didn't need to be destroyed or even touched. Uh, to go into detail about that would be probably pretty difficult. And I'm not against going under some sort of hypnosis. We all understand that there are certain variables that are up against us when we look at that for validation solely. But when we put all sorts of different elements together, and again, we find consistencies within these, there may be something there. Uh, you know, we have many of these Montauk survivors, people who said that they were there and were abused and go or undergo these uh, mental recalls. And next thing you know, they drum up memories of things that they only had small inklings had ever happened. And now that they have opened that door and allowed the subconscious to come through, next thing you know, they remember with the utmost clarity in certain cases what they had actually experienced. Now, just to tell you very quickly, I did have another reading with another woman uh, after this had ensued with Michelle, and I did enjoy her interpretation to the degree that it gave me some validation that something else was happening. What she said specifically was that I was a female in this particular time period, uh, and I actually have memory from before being involved in you know, what we consider to be the Montauk Project. I have memory of this particular individual's life growing up and going to school and finding themselves in this lab type setting. Now, prior to her bringing this to light, it wasn't something that I had considered. In fact, some may even say perhaps it was more suggestive and this is why you're taking it in. Now, if I didn't have those clear visions and that emotional connection to what she was saying, but then it going further, even in my own time, I would agree with you. I would say it was just something of suggestion. But that being said, I still don't know exactly what the involvement was and to what level. There's a whole story that goes behind this, wherein I was purportedly part of this on the operating side, wherein I was really more or less there as a clinician, okay? We, I was in a lab setting. And although we understood a lot of things happen in those type of settings that were considered nefarious, uh, I wasn't really privy to that until a certain point. Uh, it was told to me through this woman that at that point I did rebel, and the way that she used the verbiage, she said, you know, your voice fell upon deaf ears. Long story short, uh, I was subjected to the exact same trials and tribulations that the Montauk boys were, and it was not in the way of scientific experimentation, although you could say that there was that element because it was empirical. But at the same time, it was more punishment than anything, and as a result of that, I did pass on. Now, if this happened in the late 70s, 77, 78, 79, when I think most of this type of work was being done, at least at its height, then I was born in 81, that would only give me a couple few four years, you know, to reincarnate and uh, get situated into this life, which I find very interesting, and that's another subject in and of itself, uh, understanding, at least in most cases, that there are cultures that believe that at least two to three to four hundred years need to pass to give you a different paradigm to come into in way of life. But again, we've heard this has uh, been contested by experience through you know children remembering past lives or having memory of some other person that did exist and we can validate that and they have intimate details about that person's life. It's very interesting and curious to look into. Although this video that I'm going to show you in just a moment has been published for quite some time, it was my first brush with the Montauk Project in way of intuition. So, Michelle Gray and Elisa Madhus were with me on an interview with Dark Hour Paranormal, and Elisa decided that she wanted to take it down this path because I did ask the question about Montauk, and of course I had a yearning, a burning to know what was going on with this. So, what you'll hear now is 
an interpretation from Michelle, again, to give her best reading on what she has no idea about. In fact, has no prior knowledge to this project whatsoever, even though my questions were quite specific for this particular reading. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the three key players who have all passed on at this point did come in, and I felt them incredibly heavily in this room. The entire atmosphere changed, my body language changed even on the video, and I had to breathe it out for a moment to kind of settle into whatever was in my room. Now, to describe that feeling, I would say it was heavy and electric, but it wasn't heavy in the way that I was feeling dread. It was just a presence that was here. And this was felt simultaneously with her telling me that the three just walked into this particular clairvoyant space. Now, I thought it was very interesting that she was able to point out Preston Nichols, again, without actually knowing him, and she was spot on with how I feel about his energy uh, in relation to mine. Now, as she goes on, we get a little bit into music and vibration, and of course, Preston is still talking uh, to Eric and then being relayed to Michelle. And of course, we know that he, at the end of his life, was working with psychotronics, and this was a very big element in his research was music. And he also didn't care what kind of music it was. Whatever music you vibed with, that's the music you should listen to. So I thought that there were some valid points and certainly things that I could say resonate with me within her reading, which again propelled me to move forward to have a personal reading with her later on. Being said, uh, I'm going to move on to the Montauk stuff now. Just before we get into this, uh, for whatever reason, this is something that has fascinated me beyond uh, an intellectual curiosity. Uh, and I don't know why, but Let's see what we can get through uh, tonight in terms of uh, what we got here. So I mentioned three players, and then I'll just throw those names out again. You can do what you can with them. Preston Nichols, Al Balick, and Duncan Cameron were the three big names uh, that really brought this Montauk project to light. Um, if you're ready for me to ask the question, just let me know. just want to make sure we're all okay, together they, here. And they've got them. They're all in here. They said that they're there. I've got all three of them. Oh, uh, yeah, um, you do. Whew. <laughs> you can feel it, can't you? Oh, yeah. Jesus, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 They just all walked right in, right on cue. Um, yep. Eric says they've been well informed. They knew they knew they were on stage tonight. So they're just, they're happy to be here. Um, they like talking about this, too. And they still do like talking about it. Oh. Well, I'm beyond grateful for your presence tonight, gentlemen. Uh, it's, man, I wish I had the chance to know you in life, but this is this will do just fine. Um, I'll start with my first question for you here. Now that you are on the other side, can you freely explain the nature of sexual energy and why it's so important in the third dimensional reality that we live in, knowing that that is a very big part of the Montauk project and what they used and manipulated sexual energy for? Mm. they're saying and, and I'll speak this in a collective way that they're speaking because I'm not too sure individually which one is speaking um, they're saying that when it comes to sexual energy there is um, it's like um, they said to think in terms of a climax and the intensity of it uh, it creates a high and quick shuttle just like fear does which fear was also used in this as well and they're saying that this would create a, a very strong and high-pitched vibration which oh. could be transmuted and used oh wow holy shit <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of my that language yeah that is that's uh it, and so what they were doing with these boys as they were at that moment of climax they were extracting their essence through the crown to oh, reprogram wow. it after they dissected it put it together put it back into the body yeah. i don't know if they did it the same way but initially right God. yes uh, jesus christ okay <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I'll move on. No, it's it's <laughs> this is this is why I'm doing this. That's okay. This is uh this is perfect. But I could just feel them so strongly. Uh, all three yeah. of them. 
No, all everybody is still here. Everybody's still here. Eric, why is he still connected to this? Um, he's connected to each one of them, uh, life through lifetimes. Um, hmm. we all are actually. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know them in this lifetime, though, did I? Not in this lifetime, but um, what they're saying is, um, do you do you dream, Michael? Do you have like? Uh, astral travels or dreams because they're saying that you have connected to dimensions that are connected to this project oh shit and yeah that wow that you have picked up information and brought it into the third dimension with your consciousness would that could that be the reason i feel so close to that project without possibly even being there physically that's exactly right oh jesus okay wow Oh, I wonder. Okay. Wow. All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. Uh, it, it, wow. Okay. So exploring again, I know we're on a time limit here. That's why I'm kind of moving forward. Otherwise I, I just stick with it here. Um, exploring the use of external frequencies to manipulate the mind was well established during the Montauk project. What are some of the positive uses for this type of information? Oh, and could one. these frequencies be used for any type of divination? Well, actually, they're bringing forward the idea of healing. Um, uh, they're talking about focus, about uh, mind control focus, and they're talking about channeling and bringing through information, bringing through higher dimensional frequencies, uh, being able to um, separate. Uh, they're saying, uh, okay, see if I can download this properly here. Being able to separate the ego part of the mind and it's like flipping a switch to be able to go into different states of the mind to bring forward information um they're also connecting this to forms of healing as well mm -hmm. um hmm. they keep showing me a light switch like something being triggered in the mind and a, a, like a light switch going off and being able to switch being able to switch the brain. Okay. That makes sense. Uh in in as you're telling me this, I'm I'm seeing it in my head as excuse me, as you're talking about it, I can see how that would work. Um it's just a matter of sitting down with it now with that vision and seeing how I could make it practical in a sense. Yeah. Before we go forward, I have to ask a question because it's gonna bother the hell out of me if I don't. Why it is my understanding or knowledge of the Montauk project as a result of, you know, this interdimensional travel, a byproduct of the, the interdimensional travel, or is there a specific reason I know about what they did there? Wait, say that again. Is my knowledge about the Montauk project, uh, has that come about from just inadvertently astral projecting and visiting different dimensions? Or did I have, um, some sort of mission that I needed to understand that project? Was there something in, more intentional there? Oh. So this this would be the second answer, the mission. Oh. Um, Eric mm. is just saying to you that you are um, an information... Uh, you, okay, um, what would you call him then? Um, he says, a transmitter of interdimensional information... Ooh, that wow. you are Ooh. able to go in between dimensions, that you are able to travel through frequency and bring information through different states of consciousness. And uh. um, he says that this is something that is part of your, uh, your chart, part of your life contract. And this is also something that you are going to notice on a much bigger level going forward because now that you have this information eric says oh my god oh, oh oh this is huge this is blowing it, my mind <laughs> you need to you need to get a session with michelle you need to find out a lot more about yourself i will <laughs> and, and, and you need to get rid of the traumas do the portal work and you're gonna okay 
Oh, this is a swift kick in the ass for me. And uh, it's much needed for whatever reason. But this wow. is this is it right here. God. Thank you. Holy shit. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, what What's the link between music and mind control? Because I know oh, Preston Preston one. did work uh, in the studios and, and stuff at the time. Uh, and he was very aware of the connection. Is there any way that, you, that could be elaborated on a bit? Mm-hmm. So um, and now I'm not sure which is who, but this one that's speaking has a Hawaiian shirt on. Oh, this one. It's got to be loud, yeah. Hawaiian shirt on. Yep. Oh, okay. What does that mean to you, Michael? That's Preston Nichols, 100%. Oh, okay. 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 Yep. Okay. 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 So um, he says, so when we, um, and he's actually acting upon what Tesla said and Eric about frequency and numbers. And he said that music carries frequencies sound. It's frequency. Oh, yeah, of course. And so mm -hmm. what it's we carry chords. So when we think about binaural beats, when we think about hertz, they all carry a frequency. He says, is it one that makes you slow down? He says, think about music. Uh, is the music going to make you relax? Does it make you want to jump up and dance? Does it make you want to bang your head? And that's how he's saying it. He <laughs> says, what, what does the music want you to do? What do you feel when that music comes on? He says, well, when music gets played repetitively over and over, he says it creates a pathway, a neural oh. pathway. And so oh. when you relate that music, he oh, says relating yeah. that music to a circumstance. So let's say we're playing that music and he's actually showing me a visual from Clockwork Orange. And he's oh. showing their oh. eyes being opened up and music playing and watching violence. And he says, so when we play that music, I see this happening. Our minds go into that state. And he says, so it's a very powerful, powerful form of mind control. One that's been present mm. within our society. For uh, still th to this day? Yes. Uh, is, it different problems, yes. With, is it come with the government? I oh, no, 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 don't don't answer that. No, 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 don't no. Mm. Mm. Wow, I mean, as a musician, I always wondered, you know, why you get lashed onto one song. You kind of listen to it on repeat because you just you, you love the song. Maybe it's the hook there, the chorus, or maybe there's something else in there. But you're actually opening up different energetic pathways. You're that's. I'm almost speechless with that one that's amazing well and he's just saying think about how music comes on it brings you back to a memory you have yes. a wedding song you have a song with somebody you love somebody yeah you lost. yeah it brings you back true. to that memory it's very powerful yeah. so it can be used for good and it can be used for evil are you actually doing a bit of time traveling on some level when you listen to music and and it brings you back this way is there an aspect of that somewhere in, in yeah. He says yes. Huh. Wow. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, are there projects related to Montauk projects still operating today, like sister projects? I know that there were some in the '90s, but is there anything operating under that umbrella today? He says yes. Great question. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hey, we're, gonna do, we're gonna have to do a part two and yes 100 percent. this is uh my god i have no words for this it's a good thing i wrote the questions down um what happened to the people who were lost in the time tunnels during the time travel experimentation at montauk oh hmm. now i don't know how many people were talking here but they're showing me a handful Give a percent, maybe. Um, Is that easier? Well, this is this is how they're answering. I'll just say how they're answering it, which is um, they're showing me that some are interdimension. Um, some um, and now this may be hard for some to understand, but they're showing me like another version of Earth. Um, oh, okay. okay. Like another, wow. another time on earth yep. um yep. they said that we have have also experienced some of these as time travelers oh. 
that come from other versions on earth um relating this to like the bermuda triangle to going through something and ending up into another location there's also some that did not fare well um mm. talking about spontaneous combustion mm. and so mm. their bodies not being able to handle the vibration not being able oh, to wow. handle the, the the difference in vibration from one dimension to another they're saying that this is not um just like it opens and you walk through the physical body to do interdimensional travel um needs to be prepared and needs yeah. to be prepped so it's by chance that some are able to slip through and be able to experience on the other side of that that's why the process of raising the frequency of a body of a human being is something that is a process as much as i understand about the Montauk Project and my possible involvement in it, there's still this resonance that I carry with me that I cannot shed. And I do hope that one day, understanding for myself that my recollection of this in this life is not necessarily for the presentation or what some might consider the entertainment value, it's really just to heal what has already been done. I need to move forward with that in mind and not get caught up in that spindle of energy that was created by so many. Folks, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Dark Hour Paranormal. I do hope you enjoyed our presentation, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.